um, the Youth Pride Incorporated uh, did not get their grant. They're projecting a $50,000 shortfall, and they're saying that um, they're the only group that serves LGBT youth in the state. I, I, I've gotten a lot of um, questions about that. And, you know, interestingly enough, nobody likes grants until they affect mm -hmm. them. Um, the, the process that we used was to look at something that was a compelling interest, unique, that wasn't serviced anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I know that that grant goes for a very worthwhile purpose as a lot of other grants that were phased out do. But those services needs potentially are being addressed elsewhere. So that, that'll be an ongoing conversation. But interestingly enough, you get asked to end the grant program, and I've been talking more about grants today than just about anything. So, you know, there, there are compelling needs out there. We're trying to balance um, the public's desire versus individual groups' uh, desire to continue to do the good work that they've always been doing. We've acknowledged the need. We've acknowledged that these groups do good work. But you, you can't satisfy both interests, uh, at, you know, simultaneously. So we did the best we could. We'll look at the purpose of that grant and, and where the monies went uh, and how they were being utilized. And try to make a determination: is that service being provided somewhere else? And I, I, you know, one suggestion that I heard is guidance counselors in the school are in fact providing it, not as specifically, but it's something that is being addressed through other means. So we'll take a look at it and we'll see if it's unique enough to, 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 to fund. But uh, I think the public has said they don't want the community service grant program and we've, we've acquiesced and we've responded to that. And you really can't have it both ways. If you get rid of the program, some of these grants have to just go. But, but we'll look at it because there are important needs, and that's an important group that you do want to make sure is, is addressed and, and, and appropriately cared for. So, you know, it's one of a bunch of grants that, unfortunately, some folks are, are not going to want to see go away. But we'll, yeah, I think because Pride is next week as well, so people are going to be, it's definitely, well, it's it, going to be in their know, mind. And, and I understand that. <laughs> That date is just coincidental. Sure. You've got to look at the need that you want to address. And, right. you know, I understand the need, and we'll, we'll see if it can be addressed in other ways. And if it can't, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at it. But it's certainly a worthwhile, you know, worthwhile cause, a great group. But there's a lot of great groups and great causes out there that you just haven't been able to fund under the, the desires of the public. And I just want to quickly echo what the speaker just said. Just this morning before I left home, I live in Newport. I had uh, churches, pastors calling me uh, to you know, express their concern uh, about some of the small grants that they've gotten, which exponentially they've helped a lot of people. So it was a tough decision uh, to make in terms of groups like that and in terms of groups like religious organizations or others that, that help people. So it's tough. But I think we made the, the right choices in terms of reforming the program. And it's, it's, it's a living and breathing uh, uh, thing that we're doing.